everybody. Wonderful song by Queen. One I tried to learn many years ago and you know you get parts but to me certain things just sounded off and I finally put my nose to the grindstone and with the help of Brian himself showing us um, his Starlick video he actually shows some of the solo. Uh, it doesn't go all through it kind of ad libs a little bit um, but anyhow it gives you an idea same with there's I think a video of him during COVID when we were all in lockdown and he showed this main riff which really unlocked it for me to what I felt was going wrong so there's some real cool things with that lick and the solo how he kind of approaches the intro uh, of it and his thought process of what he was trying to do which I'll share with you from these videos. Um, there's great isolated tracks online that you can uh, listen to and play with which really helped me to pull out certain parts. So as always my notes are right below linked um, the video so click on that link and you can download the PDF. Um, we are in standard tuning so I approached it from a player's, how would we want to play this if we want to do this lead into this song? So I'm going to show it to you as chords and basically double stops or two notes of the chord where I think um, that catches, it catches the essence of this lead in. So we'll go over that, talk about what chords they're representing and um, go throughout the song. This lead into the song, um, I'm hybrid picking it. So I'm using the sixpence with the lower part and with the higher part, my middle finger. So it starts off and I've got all three pickups on for this part. When we go into the song, I turn off the upper pickup. So we're in the lower two and in phase. There's no phase monkey business going on here. <laughs> All right, we're going to start out with the D to C. So we're going to put, we'll just be using the third and second string. So we'll be at the third string, second fret, and second string, third fret. We'll pluck that two times, three times, I'm sorry. Then we just go back to a C, which would be open uh, third string, first fret, second string back to our D. Let that ring. Then, then we're going to strike that D again and slide up to an E. All right. So that will be at the fourth and fifth fret from the third and second string respectively. And then come up to the F and slide back to that E. Alright, so we have this so far. And we come back to our D, three hits to C, D. That'll ring for a little bit. Then we're going to go from an F to a G. Now, the easiest way to hit that G is the open third string and second uh, fret, I'm sorry, second string third fret. So we'll go from our F at the fifth fret third string, sixth fret second string. And he doesn't hang on that G real long. He'll go right to referencing a C chord. And this will be on the fourth and third string. So we're changing strings now. So we'll be hitting this fifth fret of both of those strings. Coming, that'll be three times coming back to the third fret, back to five. Then we go five to three. Again. And then we go open. That's the first measure I've written out. So honestly, this sounds really good. It is fun to play rather than, I think, single notes and trying to harmonize them and so forth. 
Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. All right, let's go through this again from the beginning with the D to C. One, two, three, four. Again, back at five and six, and then we're gonna move to a D and C, and the C slides to D. Here, and then so we do five and four on the third and second to the seventh fret on the fourth and third. And then we hit the C, or referencing the C, on the um, fifth fret of the fourth and third string and slide that up to seven. And then this is where you want to take that neck pickup off. So you're just going to be on the middle and bridge, and again, no phase monkey business. We're going to be going from a full F power chord to a D and then a G power chord. We are into a single note sequence that just picks up in volume as you go. So what I do is just kind of pay... Uh, quietly at first. Now, how do you count this out? When he hits that G, you will hear a gong with it, and it's a big G chord. It's eight counts, all right, before you start the... Okay, so I even forgot to mention in the intro, you'll hear a gong, just a plain gong at the lead-in intro, and it's four counts before they start with the... All right. But after we hit that big G power chord, we're going to count eight counts before we come in with this lick. So after the eight counts, we start with the third string. We're going to be on the third. We'll eventually move to the second and then the first. So to start out with up here at the first position, if you will, we're going to go open, third string, second fret, back to open. Then we're going to go two, four, two on that third string. Then four, five, four. Five, seven, five. Nine, I'm sorry, seven, nine, seven. And then nine, ten, nine. 10, 12, 10. Now we're going to switch. We're going to go 12 on the third string to 10 on the second, back to 12 on the third. Then we go 10 on the second to 12, back to 10. Now we go still on that second. We're going to go up to 12, 13, back to 12. Then we go 13, um, 15 back to 13. Now we'll go to the first, so it'll be 15 second, 12 first, back to 15 second. Now we'll go 12, 13, 12, first string. Then we go 13, 15, 13. And last one will be 15, 17, 15, first string. Each one, you just want to give it a few, a, vi a few, two vibratos. So that ends the lead-in, and then we are into what you would consider the intro of the actual "Tie Your Mother Down" song. All right, so this is again a little nuance Brian pointed out, and it's so, it's so great how he takes this chord and kind of pulls it apart with notes but makes it sound like a chord. So all we're doing is hitting the fifth string 
We'll, we'll be forming an A power chord. Right? So we'll be on the second fret of the fourth and third string. But we're going to be moving between those strings. So we hit the open fifth to the second fret of the fourth. Then we're going to pull down on the third fret of the second string and release to open. So we got the second fret of the third string. So hear how those, he's playing each note in this chord, but it sounds like a chord. And as you speed it up, Wonderful. That's my opinion. So we're going to do that lick, and that's a real consistent lick throughout this song. All right. It will go six times, and I consider just count the pull downs and pull offs. One. And then we're going to go to a G D power chord. To a C add ninth, so it's like taking a G power chord, but we're going to move it down a string. So we'll be on the fifth with our middle finger and move our second finger down, and then come off of that third finger to um, this would basically be a B over G, but we've, we're taking our middle finger off and putting our first finger on that fifth string at the second fret. And you can hit that fourth string open or muted, it doesn't matter. Alright, so we have this. And then we go through that lick uh, six more times. Alright, another G, D, and then C, D, or C, G, I should say. And then we do one more of these, all right? So there's a total of three sets in the intro before Freddie comes in and they start singing, all right? When the verse comes in, it's the exact same rhythm twice through. So we just keep doing that. <laughs> once another time and then we are into it's pretty much the pre-chorus this point we move up to an e like i said fifth power chord and we're going to be also using our pinky up here on the fourth string at 11 and palm muting the sixth string brian makes this a really unique uh rock rhythm. It's not your typical all right, which he does during the chorus, tie your mother down. But this one is quite different, all right? I'm going to do it slowly and then we'll discuss what he does. So he's going to play the chord and then palm mute basically between it. All right, so what he's doing there is hitting the power chord seven and nine on the fifth and fourth string. Then coming up and palm muting that six string open. Then he's adding the 11. Then is back to the palm mute. But now he hits the E power chord twice. All right, so we have this so far. All right, now we're going to come back to that. E on the sixth string after we've hit the power chord twice. And 
then we come back to the E on the power chord. Palm mute, 11. Palm mute, and then two nines. Let's just call it the, the two E's and two 11's. No palm mute between them. Two E's, 11, and another E, but no palm mute between them. Now we palm mute. All right. So I know it's really weird, but it's one of those things, if you listen to this song enough, you can do this without even thinking about it. But if you want to play it exactly, this is how I've written it out, okay? So we have from the beginning to that part. One, two, three, four. Now we go back to that E, palm mute, and then two power chords. Now we go back to that palm muted E, back to the regular then we go to the palm muted E and then the power chord E palm muted E and then 11 palm muted E and then 2 E alright so we have this and that ends the measure before we go up to a G power chord on the 10th fret here and 11 and we'll strike it one two three and then four five all right it's really not the way you count it but all right so i know it's a lot let's do it at a medium tempo so you can kind of get the feel of it and see what i'm doing one, two, three, four. All right, then we're back into our lick. All right, this is the last measure of the pre chorus. All right, we're going to go through that five times. The sixth will be more of a slide from about 12 up to the open A on the um, fifth string. All right, so we'll have this. And we walk up with two open fifth string. To the second fret vibrato, third fret vibrato, and fourth fret vibrato on that fifth string. Alright, and then we are into the chorus. This one, chorus one, we're going to be doing our straight rock and roll with our pinky. Alright, so we'll be at a D power chord, fifth string, fifth fret, the fourth string, seventh fret, that will be D, and then we'll be adding the ninth fret to this fifth string at the fifth fret for a basically D sixth and and it's again it's a typical rock and roll so it'll be two D chords we'll add the six back to a D and we'll do that four times <laughs> So the specific part gets to when we do the chords that end this first measure of the chorus. What we're going to do after we've done the D's and the D6 four times, we're going to hit an open A. That gives us time to move back to an A power chord, which we'll hit twice. And then we go to a G power chord to a D power chord. Open. Alright, so we have this so far. One, two, three, four. Now, again, listen. 
listen into the isolated track, this kind of surprised me. He hits the fifth string at the third fret. It's almost like he's going to do a pull down, but doesn't. He goes. So we're hitting the fifth string, third fret to two A's. We'll add the fourth to that A and back to another A power chord. So we have this so far. Let me take it from, let's just take it from the top. All right, one, two, three, four. At that point, he hits another down up A. And then back into our D with the D sixth. We'll do that four more times. And then we go into a G power chord. We'll do an A over D power chord. So we want to hit that fifth string in this D chord. Then we move to our C add ninth to our B over G. So at the end of the chorus we do a full measure of that A lick into a G D C ninth B over G. Then we're into verse 2. So after chorus 1, we're into verse 2. Verse 2 is very similar to verse 1. We've got two uh, measures with the A leg, and then our walk down. We'll do that twice through. Then we go into our second pre-chorus. The second pre-chorus is different in that we play the E exactly. And, and the, the palm muting and so forth is all the same. But after that, we're only going to do a pull off three to two on the uh, third string. slide down on that fifth string from 12 and do our walk up. So that's the difference with chorus two is our E is the same as far as palm muting and stuff but when we get to the A lick it's only one time through and then our walk up into chorus two. Chorus two is just like we just went over with chorus one. Chorus 2 um, is slightly different in the third measure. We're going to do the first two measures the same. Um, after we do the big uh, G power chord to A over D, we're going to go into our A uh, lick. four times. Then when we hit the A, he's going to bend his bar down and give it some vibrato, all right, five times, like I've noticed. And then you'll come into the C add ninth to our B over G. And then we're into the solo rhythm. So that's the difference in chorus two from chorus one. We have more of a bar, you know, break, if you will, into rather than a G to D, we're doing the bar bends. And then we go to our C at ninth to B over G. So for solo one, the rhythm is uh, a full measure and of our A lick, then our G, D, all right, we'll do that twice. 
So after two measures of the A-Lick, as I spoke of, we're going to come back to our E. Alright. Then we do our, like I said, the E palm muted. Then we're back to two measures. This is during the solo rhythm of the A-Lick. G, D, C, ninth over, and then B over G. Alright, after that, the vocals re-enter, but what they do, again, he's playing the lead. When the vocals re-enter, he is back up here to that E with the palm mutes. What happens is you will hear some slide downs or if you will okay so basically there's an overdub here you're going to hear an a and that slide down and then two more a's held and then slide down and then four a's slid down and then our walk up and then we're into chorus three all right Guitar 2, as I've noted, I just wrote this out, we're going to be doing it here at the 12th and 14th fret. So basically, don't use a 12, just use the second, I'm sorry, fourth and third string at 12 and hit that again and then vibrato and slide down. And then four times. Chorus 3. So now we're coming to the end of the song. We've got Chorus 3, which will lead us into another solo rhythm that takes us out of the song. But Chorus 3 is a little bit different because it's got an overdub guitar. And I'm going to show you what the overdub guitar does. He's going to do our typical D with our added 6. <laughs> It's that open E string, which gives him time. Now he's coming up to the third fret of the, um, the third string, I should say, at the 19th fret with a bend and striking 20 also, but without bending 20. All right, and then we do the second measure of, this would be chorus three, it's the big G to A over D. That's the same. And then we go into one A lick. Full six times through before G D. Now we're into solo two, which is uh, takes us out of the song. The rhythm is basically continuing our A lick with a G to D to C ninth and B over G. Alright? Alright, so as solo two rhythm comes in, we go through two full measures of that. It ends with this, and this is how we end the song. So we're gonna go through a full A lick. <laughs> chords but we end up on a D power chord at the fifth fret. Let that ring and then we end on what I call a big A. So we're gonna hit our A power chord but we're gonna add on the first and second string the fifth fret. And you'll hear an over overdubbed guitar at the 20th fret. All right doing this. If 20 is too high for you, you can go to 15 on the first string. It's a G note, stretch up to A, all right? And then you'll just hit A twice and end. So that's how the rhythm of the song goes and ends. Hello, 
comes in as Brian's coming back from his dive bombing, if you will, with the, the tremolo bar and vibrato. And you'll hear him hit the third string at the seventh fret and then the third and second string at the fifth fret with a slight bend. And then he comes back to the fourth string at seven twice. Again, what I found interesting in Brian's uh, Starlick video is he was talking about he's hitting this D note on the third fret and he wanted to represent two D notes but the second one bent. So what he does, and I've never seen this done before, is he hits, again this is the second time through, he's going to hit that uh, third string at the seventh fret and then the sixth fret pulled off to five with a bend and slight vibrato. I've never seen that technique until I watched the Starlink's video and even then I didn't realize what he was doing until I started playing with it. So it's a and then comes back to that four string at seven. So we have this up to that point, all right? Vibrato bar comes back up, a little bit of vibrato, it slide off, and then we come in crashing with a... Now, the second time we bend that fifth string in the intro to this, we're going to come to this second string at eight, bend that up, and hit eight unbent. And that second eight has some vibrato. And then we're going to do a walk down. We'll go from the second string at five to the third string, eight, seven, five. There's a slight pause there, all right? So we have this. goes 7-5 on the third string to 7-5 on the fourth string to 7-6-5 and he slides at 5 to 3 all right so from the 8 pull down and then 8 unbent Pulls off, hits three, pulls off to open, and lands on three. All right, again. After that, he's going to do this lick three times. We're going to hit five on the fifth string, pulled off to three with a bend, and then open. 5th string to 3rd fret again with vibrato. Again. And then we're going to pull off 5 to open and 3 to open on that 5th string. So we're doing it a total of 4 times after the It'll become the fifth time we hit the five pulled off to open. We're going to slide on the sixth string, or sixth fret, I should say, of that fifth string, up to seven. And then catch five on the fourth string, back to seven on five. And then five, seven on four. And then we'll go to the third string, hit five, but a bend. Jump strings to the fifth string at seven. So we go from the third string to the fifth string. Okay, yeah, a lot of notes there. Um, let's do the whole damn thing up to that point. One, two, three, four.
at that point, we're in this fifth position. What we're going to do is take the fifth string, hit five, pull off to open, and do that on the fourth string. Landing on seven on the fifth string, back to seven on the fourth. And then we go to five with a slight bend and land on, that's on the fourth string, and then land on seven on the fifth with some vibrato and slide off. Alright, so we have this from the five pull-offs. One, two, three, four. So the next lick you hear is really the last that's played before the slide uh, part of the first solo. So what we're going to do is slide into 11 on the fifth string. Alright, so we're sliding into 11. It's almost like a, a muted note. And then we hit 9 on the 4th string twice. Then we come to the 3rd string with 11 bent release and pulled off to 9. And then 11 pulled off to 9 on that 3rd string, landing on 11 on the 4th. Alright, so far we have this. to nine on the third string some slight vibrato and then we're going to finish it up here on the second to third string we're going to hit 12 on the second string bent and then 12 unbent and then 12 again pulled off to 10 landing on 11 on the third back to 10 on the second and 11 on the third so we have this so far. Um, let's just do that whole thing from 11. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we come in with the slide. Okay, got the slide out. And again, you don't have to play this with slide. You can really just slide with your fingers into it using the frets. Now if you're using a slide, don't forget, you're not going over the fret like you would finger it. You're going right to the bar below it. Okay, so where the three dots are, I wouldn't put it in the middle of it, I'd put it just below it. That's 12. Okay, so what we're going to do to start out with is on the fourth string slide from 12 to 14 and then catch 14 on the second string. Then we come back to the fourth string at 14 and then hit 14 on the second and third string and slide back. So we have this all together. Alright, so there's that slide back, if you will. Now we're going to come back up again and kind of arpeggiate the 14 between the second and third string. So we'll go on the fourth string again from 12 to 14. And then we're going to go back and forth, starting with the third string, second, third, second, back to three. Alright, I'm trying to do this so it's not too annoying. And then what we're going to do after that second uh, time of hitting the third string, well, it's the third time hitting the third string. So it'll sound like this. We're going to hit the first string at 14. And then move up to the second string. We're going to slide from 16 to 17. And then hit 17 on the first string. Alright, so we have this. And then what we do is come back to the second string at 17. Back to the first string at 17. But that first string will slide to 15. Right. So from the 14. And then, once we slide back on the first string, we're going to come back to 17 and slide back on the second string to 15. Alright, at that point, we'll slide from 15 to 13. Alright, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, 15 to 13. 
And then we go from 13 to 14. And then we're going to catch both 14 on the third and second string. Alright, so we have this all together. Let's go from that 14 and then 16, 17. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that's the whole first measure. Now the second measure is a little bit different. We're going to kind of uh, play off some of the triads rather than just two or one note with the slide. So we're going to slide in the second measure from 14 to 12 on the third string and then hit the fourth string at 12. Grab 13, slide to 14 on the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd. Hit it again and let it ring. Alright, so we have this so far. Then we're going to hit 14 on the 4th and 3rd, and then 14 just on the 3rd. Let that ring a little bit as we slide it down. Okay, now the second half measure of this slide, um, second measure, and the last half of it, is 12 to 14 on the fourth string, catching 14 on the third, back to the second, I'm sorry, to the second, and then back to the third. And then we're going to slide from 12, or, I'm sorry, as we hit 14, we slide to 12, Hit the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd, and slide back to 14. Alright, so we have this so far. Then we're going to hit 14 on the 2nd and 1st string. Alright, so I know it's a lot of notes and a lot of back and forth here. Uh, that's where my notes will come in and get a player where you can go back and forth over these parts. But once you get that, what we're going to do, this is a real kind of recognizable part of the solo. We're going to be sliding from, this is the third and last measure. We're going to be sliding from 14 on the third string to 12, and then we'll hit 14 on the fourth and third string. do that a total of four times and then we just slide from 12 to 14 after that fourth time and then he stays there hits the third uh, and then he stays there hitting the fourth string at 14 and then the third and second as they ring and then slides out all right, that last measure together. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that is the um, solo with the slide. And like I said, if you want to do it with your fingers, it sounds fine. All you got to do is slide. kind of stuff and it sounds great. Oh, so, solo too. Like I said, it's all notes played mostly. It, it pretty much is up at this fifth position. You know, we'll be going to three and open with some pull-offs, but again, it's all in the upper register. We're hitting that seven and then six on the third string pulled off to five with a bend. <laughs> on the fourth string at seven twice with the little vibrato the second time. Again. Then we're going to hit seven on the third string to eight on the second. Then we go back to the fifth fret of that second string and hammer into eight and pull back off to five. Then you want to use your third finger up here at the 8th fret of the 3rd string and slide into 7 and then hit 5. <laughs> then we're going to do a pull off from 7 to 5 on the 3rd string landing a 7 on the 4th string back to 5 with a slight bend of vibrato. <laughs> and then we're going to kind of 
go up, if you will, in string, we're going to do the same pull off and land on seven from the fourth string. And then we're going to move down, if you will, or down to the higher register, because we're moving this way. We're going five to seven on the four string to five a little bent, landing on seven on the four. Alright, so a lot of notes there or, or numbers. Let me show it to you again. Follow my notes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> He's going to do some double stops. He's going to hit five on the uh, fourth and third string twice. To just that fifth fret of the fourth string. And then a pull off from seven to five on the fifth, I'm sorry, fourth and third string, landing on seven on the fifth. And then we hit five with a bend twice and a seven pulled off to five landing on seven on the fifth and fourth string and then we kind of do this back and forth fourth and third string at five to the fifth string at seven and then we go to the third string at seven with a bend and then vibrato and a release and pulled off to five. At that point, we do a little bit of a walk down. We're going to hit eight bent and then eight on bent to five on the second string and then eight, seven, five pulled off. to five and then we'll hit seven again on that third string pulled off to five and pull off on the fourth string seven to five landing on seven on the fifth back to five on the fourth so from that second string eight bent and then eight unbent and then we go seven six five on the fifth string and then we go to the third fret there's no slide down we'll just hear three pulled off to open and then back to three and then five pulled off to open to three pulled off to open the three open, five open, three open twice, and five open. So it's kind of a back and forth between the three and fives with three twice. Alright, so uh, let's take it from eight with the bend and unbent. One, two, three, four. So the last measure of the solo that takes us out is similar to what we've done. We're going to be pulling off from five in the third fret of the fifth string to open. So it'll start out with the third fret. And then we land on the sixth string at three with a bend. So we have this. to the open fifth string and then we're going to take five and slide up to seven and then to the fourth string seven five seven to the third fret at five with a bend and then we'll hit five on the third and second string pulled off to open so for the last measure of the solo we're going to pull off 
from the third fret to open on the fifth string and then follow that up with the fifth pull to open and we'll do that basically twice till we come back to the third pulled off to open one two three four <laughs> the 6th string at the 3rd fret, slight bend, and then open 5th string. So we have this. Then, right at this position, we hit 5, slid up to 7 on the 5th string, and then just lay our finger down, catch 7, 5, 7 on the 4th string. That'll give us time to hit the 5th fret of the 3rd string with a slight bend and then a 5 on the 3rd and 2nd together pulled off to open. So from the slide we have this, 1, 2, 3, 4. We land on 5 on the 3rd string to 7 on the 4th and then end it on the 7th fret of the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd. And that is the second solo that takes us out. And again, you know, there's the rhythm and everything. So I really hope that helps everybody. Like I said, the slide, it's just one of those things, it's really Brian feeling it. He never plays it the same. So... You can play with the recording with exactly what I've written out or just go with the feeling there and understand the notes that he's playing and you'll have the whole song. So I really hope you enjoy.